let's get started with the microservices so first let's understand how the microservices has been evolved and what are the in fact uh, the microservices principles we have what are the challenges and how we can move down layer application to the microservices so if you're looking at the evolution of computing so initially if you are aware of we follow the waterfall model while building any software and is application architecture we follow that time the monolithic architecture and for the deployment we have been a physical machine a physical server where we do the deployment and here when it is coming to the data center as a data center one we have been the multiple physical server over there where we do the deployment later on we started to use the agile as a development process and for the application architecture we started to follow the ntr application and for deployment and packaging we are using the virtual machine over there so a single vm now we can divide into the multiple vm over there so these are the multiple vms we have created over there and now for hosting the application now don't need to have the multiple machine as we have been before now there is a one machine is sufficient and that single vm we can divide into the multiple vm for deploying our application in the isolated environment so this is the way how we having the things over there and if you're looking at in the traditional style in the traditional one we are using the devops as a development process and for application architecture we are using the microservices and for deployment and packaging we are using the containers and for the application infrastructure we are using the cloud nowadays so this is the latest style the people are following so if you're looking at for the microservices a microservice is a small unit that has only one responsibility or you can say it is containing a single logic which is going to solve a specific problem and guys don't confuse with the word service so service does not mean it's a service no microservice is a small unit of the project which is going to solve a specific problem even microservices are independent also which work together to build a highly automated and independent and evolving software so whenever we need an independent unit and our system is going to be evolved constantly even the same thing is happening nowadays in the enterprise grade application when you taking the example of other facebook twitter netflix any other enterprise grade application they are going to evolve on that daily basis so each microservice you can deploy independently even they don't need to share the same technology stack so one microservice you might build using the dotnet stack another one you can build using the java stack or python or let's say node js so it's up to you whatever the stack you are willing to use over there and when it is coming to comparing the microservices with the older style of building the thing so uh, you know we initially follow the monolithic style then we started to use the n layer or service oriented architecture now right now we are following the microservices so this is the way how the monolithic style we having so everything we are writing inside one project or you can say in a one unit as a single unit we are building it later on we divide into the multi unit or you can say the n layer architecture or you can say we have been the service front architecture so now here we have been the uh, data access layer bell layer we have been the service layer we have been the let's say presentation layer so now we have been the further more small unit so each unit further we decompose into the multiple one if you're looking at here we can think about like this way let's say this one project we divided into this more smaller unit like this way this is the way how the things are happening nowadays so the the microservices are the more smaller unit as we used before in case of an layer and service on the architecture even it is a evolution of service on the architecture so it, it is a you can say the evolved version of service on the architecture microservices principles so before building the microservices you should know about the microservices principle so like model around the business domain culture of automation hide implementation details decentralize all the things deploy independently isolate failure and a highly observable so these are the microservices principle you should know before building your microservices let's understand each microservice principle in detail model around the business domain 
So when you are building your microservices, so you should separate the system capability into the different domains, and each domain will focus on one thing, and its associated logic. Let's say you are building a e-commerce application. So in the e-commerce application, you should separate the system capability like account management, inventory management, order management, product management. So in this way, you should separate the system capability into the different domains and subdomains. The next one is really a culture of automation. So you should follow the culture of automation by designing it for continuous integration and continuous delivery. So for following the culture of automation, you should have the idea of DevOps. So with the help of DevOps, it can be implemented easily. Next principle here: hide implementation detail. Hiding the internal details reduce the coupling and help to do the changes and improvement without affecting the overall architecture. So it doesn't mean what the framework you are using for building the service one, service two, and service three. So here the implementation detail are hidden from each other. So one service can be built using the .NET, another service can be built using the Java, and the third service can be built using the Node.js. So you are unaware of the implementation detail about the services here. The next principle here decentralization. So there is no centralized database. So usually each service having its own database. So usually in monolithic and application we are having a centralized database, but in microservices architecture there is no centralized database. Each service must have its own database for managing the things. The next principle here deploy independently. So each service can be deployed independently. Failure isolation. So the impact of failure is less in microservices architecture compared to monolithic layer. So if one of the services is going to fail, so this service should not impact the other services. So the services in the architecture keep running without any issue. Highly observable, the services should collect as much as information so that that can be analyzed if something is happening at the service level. So the information can be collected with the help of logging the events, logging the activities and the statistic of the services. So this is very important when you are going to debug each service. So this is all about the microservices principle. So you should be aware of these microservices principle when you are building your microservice. When to use a microservices architecture? So this is very important thing you should know before implementing the microservices architecture in your application. It doesn't mean everywhere you need to follow the microservices architecture. You should first understand the need of the microservices architecture. So the large application that requires a high release of velocity. It means you are having a enterprise grade application where you are going to provide the release frequently. In that case, the microservices architecture will help you because it will not impact the entire application. It will impact only one piece of your application. So that is actually nowadays in demand when you are working with uh, the application where you are having the users in billions in millions. So there the microservices architecture will help you. The next point is here the complex application that needs to be highly scalable. Sometimes it happens you are building a ERP or building a, a CRM. So there also the microservices architecture will help you because your application is very complex. You are managing so many domains, you are managing so many subdomains. So there we need the high scalability. So, so the changes of one a component change should not impact the others. In that case also the microservices architecture will help you. The next point is here the application with the rich domains and many subdomains. I already explained to you this one. And the next point is here an organization that consists of small development teams. Sometime it happens you have started a project and their project might be having the different different other technology stack. Now you are going to collab together to make a big application. In that case also the microservices architecture will help you because you are having uh, the smaller smaller teams. So one team can be from .NET, another team can be from Java and another team can be from the Node.js. But ultimately they are working for a single project. So in that case also the microservices architecture will help you because you are having multiple smaller development teams. So these are the use cases you should keep in your mind when you are going to implement the microservices architecture. Advantages of microservices. Microservices are language independent and framework independent. It means they can be built by using any programming language, by using any framework. 
they can be deploy develop and redeploy independently and even you can scale them independently also without compromising the integrity of your application it's having the better fault isolation that keep the other services to work even on failure if let's say one of the services is going to be failed so the services will run smoothly without any issue there is a zero downtime upgrade so if you are upgrading something in your system so it will not down your system completely only uh, the few things will not work so that is the beauty of the microservices architecture services can be off from different server or even from the different data centers it means a service can be hosted at server 1 and then other service can be hosted on server 2 even they can be from the different data center they can be from the different time zone also so this is also the way how the microservices will help you uh, to build a complete system microservices are reliable and self healing it means if one of the service is going to be down so it can be uh, redeploy again and 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 can be a fix it independently so so you don't need to worry about like other uh, system will not work here so this is the the benefit of using the microservices pattern microservices support the continuous integration and delivery also so with the help of devops you can implement the ci cd pipeline for providing the release for your microservices even these are easy to integrate with the third parties services a like third party a system so these are the various benefits of implementing the microservices architecture in your application so when you're looking at the what are the challenges we having for microservices so microservices based application in microservice based application we having the various challenges so first one is complexity a microservices based application is more complex as compared to the equivalent monolithic application so microservices architecture is good from the perspective of business but if i looking at from the perspective of development it is more complex and more difficult to follow as compared to the the traditional and tier and monolithic style development and testing are not here easy because if one service having the dependency on each other so we need to understand the other service as well what data is coming what data is not coming sometime it can be the case both the service might be developed by different different team so need to get in touch with that team so development is that testing is also the issue when the service having the dependency on each other then we having the lack of governments here we are going to decentralize everything so which is going to lead so many problem like maintenance problem if let's say the people started following their own way let's say one microservice i build in java one i build in dot net one i build in php one i build in node js so think about when it is coming to the maintenance need to have so many men power to maintain that one okay because each microservice having its own way so so this is also the issue start arising when you are involving the multiple framework in the multiple languages so make sure or you can say try to use only one stack for all the microservices when you are building so that this issue will not be arise even we having the data integrity issue as well because when it is coming to the data decentralization so data consistency data integration issues start arising that we need to consider and we need to take care of then we having here network congestion and latency as well so obviously when you having the so many microservices so they need to communicate with each other so when you then they start communicating with each other while returning the required result set so they start adding the additional latency because before returning the result i need to call more than one microservices and they are communicating to each other so that is a network congestion there is a excel latency over there so make sure when there is a requirement of communication between the microservices so you have designed in such a way so it will not be in the synchronous communication try to implement asynchronous style of communication apart from these we having the other challenges as well like data integrity which i already told you so microservice is going to have its own database that lead into the 
data consistency challenge. So what are the record you added it one place. So make sure same record related things you have updated in other in another database as well, which is a part of the different microservices. Management as well is important. So to implement a successful microservices architecture, you need to know a mature DevOps culture. Okay, so make sure you are implementing the DevOps properly in your project, in your application, so that uh, the management can be done easily. Versioning also is a problem. So when you're going to release a new version of your microservice, and if you are not keeping in the mind the compatibility of the, the old services, like backward compatibility and the forward compatibility, so it, so it might be the issue. The next we having here is skill set. So to build the microservices based application, we need the skilled team as well. It's not the case, let's say, if somebody is working as a ASP.NET Core developer and let's say Angular developer, he can start working on microservice architecture. No. First train those people on microservices architecture and the related stuff so that at least they having the understanding how the things are going and what are the, uh, the principles we need to take care in the mind. Then only you can follow it. So if you don't have the skill team, it's very difficult to implement the microservices. So now let's understand here how actually a Anlayer application we can migrate to the microservices based application. So we having a Dell layer, which is communicating with the database over here. Then we having your business layer that is interacting with Dell. And at the business level, let's say we having these business classes, catalog, authentication, order. And finally, from the UI, we are accessing the logic with the help of these classes here and this is my ui so ultimately this ui the people are accessing from the desktop people accessing from the browser and the mobile phone like this way so this is a typical and layer or tier application we have being in ace.net core in the similar application you are willing to migrate to the microservices how it can be migrated it can be migrated like this way so whatever the dell layer we having now we separated at the microservice label. So whatever the domain we having, business domain. So identify the business domain in your application. After that identification of business domain in your, in your application, just design your microservices. So what we did here, we added a separate microservice for catalog. We added a separate microservice for authentication. We added oh, for order one. Now each microservice having its own database like this way. Okay, and when it is coming to exposing to that UI. So we are not exposing them directly. Actually, they are exposing to themselves through the API gateway. So API gateway is a common interface or you can say it is providing a unified endpoint for accessing all these backend microservices. So this shopping website will not communicate to microservice directly. It will communicate to the API gateway and behind the scene API gateway will access this backend services. So what we did here, this complete business layer, we decompose into microservices. Similar way, this UI layer, I decompose into two separate websites. One website for public users, like members, and another website for internal support team. You can have another website as well. So here we just decomposing our application into a smaller unit or you can say smaller independent use unit so that we can able to deploy and manage them separately. We don't need to have the dependency on each other. Let's say if you're going to provide a new release for admin, I like support website. So only it will impact the support website, not the, the, the shopping website one. 